Hello, my name is Lynn and thank you for joining me. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a custom embossing diffuser plate. And basically what I've already done here is die cut out of thick cardstock. Um, a, this ends up being five and seven eighths square um, plate that I'm making. And so I just die cut the same butterfly die that came in Pink and Main's May 2021 Butterfly Kisses Crafty Courtyard box and um, stacked them, glued them together. And now I have a diffusing plate that's roughly the same thickness as my cutting plate. Now you do end up with a lot of butterfly die cuts because I ultimately needed eight layers of cardstock. In my video where I used the embossing folder to create cards using uh, the Pink and Main kit, I only stacked two layers thinking that would be enough because I thought it just needed an extra little bit of thickness. I didn't think I would need enough thickness to replace an entire cutting plate. But I decided that I'm going to aim to just replace the entire cutting plate. So instead of uh, using these extra butterfly die cuts as elements on future cards, I decided that I'll just make, I'll just turn those into uh, embossing plates as well. So basically how you would use these is that um, wherever you place these, the card stock that's under them is what will get embossed. And so in the case of um, the larger plate where I have the aperture, the butterfly aperture cut out, um, that center portion where there's no paper there's no pressure and so um, you'll end up with flat uh, cardstock there and everything around it will be embossed and with these pieces it will be the reverse where the butterfly wings will be embossed and um, nothing else will. So here what I'm doing is I did um, already put down some liquid glue in between my layers of cardstock and I'm running it through my die cutting machine just to really burnish that in evenly and with um, a lot of pressure to really make sure that this is compressed, it's all even, and that liquid glue really um, you know seeps into the cardstock. So we get a really nice, flat, firm, um, thick piece of, um, I mean, this is beyond heavyweight chipboard here. <laughs> so Again, this is uh, about the same thickness as my cutting plate, and I am going to use a different folder. This embossing folder did not come in the Pink and Main kit, but I really, really love this pattern, so I wanted to try this out with this pattern. Um, I'm going to spritz my cardstock a little bit because that's going to soften the paper fibers and prevent cracking, and so I give that just a very light um, spritz, and... I definitely recommend that when you test out your um, diffusing plate that you use the thickest cardstock that you think you'll ever want to emboss. So here I'm going to put the plate right over top and it's going to replace one of my cutting plates as I go to emboss this. And um, the reason to use the thickest paper that you'll think you'll ever use um, in an embossing folder is because when you go to emboss something that's lighter weight, then if it's not enough pressure to give you a good uh, embossed impression, then you can always shim it by adding, you know, an extra piece of cardstock. However, if you, um, in creating your embossing diffuser, if you use thinner paper and then you um, test it and get it just right to the thickness that you're getting a nice good impression on that thinner paper. If one day you decide to use thicker paper, your um, embossing diffuser may not actually run through your machine because it may be too thick. Um, so I would err on the side of making um, the diffusing plate just, uh, just thick enough so that it works on your thickest cardstock and um, and test that way. So I am using 120 pound cardstock and I'm trying um, different um, sandwich combinations just to see what's going to give me the right pressure um, to go through. And I finally um, came to the conclusion that 
it was simpler than I thought. I just needed my A plate, the embossing folder, and um, my diffusing plate, and then another cutting plate, and that was it. <laughs> so pretty pretty much the standard combination for embossing on a cuddle bug. But um, but uh, I wasn't 100% sure. So it just took a little bit of trial and error. And here, when I bring this out, you'll see that in the center where the, our aperture was cut out, it's nice and flat. So you could um, stamp your sentiment in the center there. You could do a lot of things. And of course, um, now that you have a nice flat image, even if you want it to like um, uh, adhere another die cut, a butterfly die cut over top there, you could, and it would be nice and flat surface. So you don't have to worry about, um, you know, gluing a die cut onto, um, you know, the imperfect uh, surface that um, of the embossed design. So um, here I'm going to try something a little bit different, and I'm actually going to do some partial um, stamping here. So I want to stamp out just the um, left side, the side of uh, that looks like the traditional butterfly, but I also want uh, some of the body showing, um, but not exactly half. I want most of the body to show. <laughs> so that's why I'm putting um, a little piece of paper there to mask off the right hand side. So I'm just going to do um, some gold heat embossing here and and I'm gonna rough up that the body just a little bit so that it just it doesn't look too too perfect there, and um, and now we have a beautiful half butterfly. So I'll go ahead and die cut this out, and this is the first time I'm ever doing any uh, a technique like this at all, and um, I thought that it would be really perfect for this butterfly design because it is already asymmetric and it does already have um, sort of that more organic look on the right hand side. So what I'm going to do is using the exact same embossing folder, um, I'm going to actually use the um, diffusing plate that we made with the wings um, from the butterfly die cut. Again, I'm just going to spritz this with a little bit of water. Um, there was a, actually more water that came out than I intended, so I had to wipe that off a little bit. But Because you don't want your paper soaking wet. You just need a light spritz. And so I'm going to lay my um, diffuser right over where my cardstock is. And I did find that you know it's hard to really keep that in place and so I just ran just a, a little um, little bit of my repositionable um, uh, tape runner um, right on top of the embossing folder to hold down my diffuser plate and um, you don't need a lot and it's repositionable so it'll rub off um, just fine so it's not going to hurt your folder or your um, diffusing plate at all but it just keeps it there uh, long enough so that it's not going to move around as you try to get your top cutting plate in and as you run it through your die cutting machine and so I'm gonna again run this through the machine a couple of times and then you'll see that we're going to get this really, really neat effect of only having embossed what was below uh, the wings on our diffusing plate. So look at that. So one half, you have one finish that's perfectly flat. It's um, heat embossed in gold. And then the other side has this um, really different look and it's raised. It has all that texture and... Um, I'm going to actually bring it to life just a little bit more with my uh, Cosmic Shimmer um, polish. I don't know which shade I want to use, and so I just went ahead and embossed another uh, scrap piece of black here, because at this point I don't want to just wing it. Um, I was really excited that this was actually coming together because I didn't know... Um, I had a good idea that it would work, I just didn't know because I've never done it before. Uh, so I just want to make sure that I... Um, test this out and preview it before um, making uh, choosing one over the other, which I'm glad I did because the one I thought I needed um, was not the one I ended up going with. 
And so here, uh, you can do this technique. I'm sure you've seen it before. Um, you just need a very light hand and um, try to go evenly across the top of the surface just so that those raised areas of the emboss picks up the polish. And you can see how it really brings that pattern to life. And it's just gorgeous, um, especially very striking uh, the gold on black. And so here you have just another fun way to use these um, embossing diffusers. So um, I'm going to turn these into cards, but first I need to do a little, another little test. So <laughs> I've got some worn, worn lipstick uh, distress oxide ink. And what I'm testing out here is I just did a custom mix of uh, some clear embossing powder with ice white glitter to create my own clear glitter embossing powder. And um, you can always do that. You can always mix um, your embossing powders with each other, with glitter, etc. cetera. And um, I thought that worked out okay. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do that on my real panel in here. So this is our embossed panel where right in the center there, the butterfly is flat. And that will allow me to um, have a pretty clean, clear, stamped impression. Um, there are areas that still got embossed, like the antenna, for example. So you can see that's not that's not going to get like a really crisp uh, stamping. But for the most part, um, you know, we did a really good job of uh, creating our diffusing plate. And I'm going to heat emboss this. And so you end up with a really flat card, but gorgeous because you have all that texture, you have all that pattern. And so it's just another technique, another way of, um, you know, adding detail to a card panel and, uh, you know, just kind of creating a an effect that makes people wonder how how did they do that? <laughs> you know, because it's all flat in the center, but you've got all that texture surrounding it. And of course, if you know, if you wanted, you could have, um, you know, put a die cut. You you could have fully embossed the panel and then layered a die cut over top of it and and get a very similar, different look. But um, but I rather like this because it does keep it really flat and just different and interesting. I don't know what occasion I'm going to use this for. So I did prep myself a couple of sentiments um, because I made these cards just out of determination to really figure out how to make a custom diff embossing diffuser plate. And so I don't actually, I'm not in need of cards right now. Um, so the same with this one, I'm going to assemble this, but I'll add a sentiment later when I decide who's going to get this and for what occasion, but I'm only attaching this butterfly um, at its body so that the wings can kind of, one side tends to curve up and the other side tends to curve down because of the heat embossing made, made it curve kind of downward. But I rather like that and I'm not gonna correct it. So it just, it just adds to like how different the two halves are. And then this is the one where we use the aperture uh, embossing plate to uh, leave a flat center and that we could then stamp and emboss on. And I just have a couple of uh, really, I wanted the sentiment to be really small so that everything else um, really shines. And so I hope that you enjoyed this video and give it a try. Let me know what you think. Um, if you did like this video, please do consider liking, commenting, and sharing. And if you do want to uh, see new videos as I release them, um, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you'll be notified anytime I publish a new video. Thank you again. And until my next video, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Thanks. Bye.